Are you as good at bass as you think you are? It was really good. Teaching bass for over a decade, I've seen some students who overrate their skill level and some who don't give themselves enough credit. So here's a checklist of 17 things you should be able to do to know if you're an intermediate bass player or not. Before you find out if you make the grade, three things. One, the term intermediate is completely subjective. So if you think I've missed something, leave me a furious comment below. Number two, if you can't do any of the items in this list, check the video description below for helpful resources. And three, shout out to Nate Savage at Guitar Lessons on YouTube. His Are You an Intermediate Guitar Player was a big inspiration for this video. Also shout out to Noob Josh, who's gonna help us see what not to do. Hi! So let's blast through this checklist. There are 17 points, but I'm gonna break them up into three chunks to make it more digestible. First, the basics. Number one, can you tune using a tuner in 15 seconds or less? Why does that matter? Because if you're tuning during a show, the crowd will start throwing beer bottles at you if you keep them waiting too long. Plus, other musicians will just think you're lame if you take forever to tune. Number two, do you have your money notes memorized, which is what I call the natural notes on the first four frets. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, A, B. Why does that matter? Because otherwise you'll get lost at jams when people call out chords to you and you won't be able to read sheet music or chord charts. G to C. So here's the test. Can you play the money notes from low to high with a metronome? at 50 beats per minute and say the names out loud like this E F G A B C stick with me D E F almost done G A B and you should also be able to find neighboring notes using sharps and flats like going from F to F sharp or going from B to B flat Number three, can you fret with all four fingers? Because you want to have the ability to play lines from very simple to more technical. So unless you have a previous injury or otherwise non-standard finger situation, you should be fretting with all four fingers, including the pinky. Fretting with the pinky can definitely feel awkward at first, but given some practice, you and your pinky will become close friends. You're my best. Number four, can you alternating pluck eighth notes at 120 beats per minute, like this? Just on an open string, or on the more advanced side, adding some fretting and string crossing. Because if you're not alternating up to speed, you'll have limited options for playing and creating bass lines at common tempos, which is why I put a ton of focus into alternating in my Beginner to Badass course over at BassBuzz.com. You can test your alternating speed skills out on Touch Too Much by ACDC, which sounds like this. One, two, three, four. But it's not all about playing fast, which brings us to number five. Can you play along with a metronome at a slow tempo, like 50 beats per minute? Just playing simple stuff doesn't matter. Just not getting lost rhythmically. Because playing bass is all about groove. So if you have bad time and you can't lock into the pulse of other instruments, nobody's going to want to play with you. Plus, you'll even sound bad playing along with recordings because the rhythms you play won't lock into the rhythms of the track. Huh? Number six, can you play legato? That means playing nice, long, connected notes with no gaps in between, like this. 
of the fastest ways I can hear that somebody is a beginner is if all their notes are short and choppy because long notes often support the groove better. So as an intermediate bassist, you might not have this perfect, but it should be in your awareness. So if I'm playing Come As You Are as a beginner, then as an intermediate, I'm working towards So much to learn. I guess I'll click like on this video and subscribe to Bass Buzz for more educational content. Thanks, Noob Josh. Now on to number seven, can you mute the strings you aren't playing? Because if you don't have good muting technique, people won't hear what you mean to play. They'll just hear a bunch of horrible noise from ringing strings. <laughs> is complicated and as an intermediate bass player you will not have it perfect, but you should be able to consistently mute your low strings using the thumb of your plucking hand. So can you play something like Sunshine of Your Love and have it sound clean like this with no rumbling strings in the background like this? Okay, on to the theory section of the checklist. Don't worry, it's short. Number eight, do you know basic scales? In my approach to teaching beginners, that's just five scales. The major scale, the minor scale, the major pentatonic scale, the minor pentatonic scale, and the blues scale. Why do you need to know scales? Because almost every bass line you've ever heard is built around some kind of scale, even those written by people who don't know theory. So if I shout out, play me a D minor pentatonic scale, you should just be able to bust it out without having to think too much. Or if I say C major scale, just boom. So if you wanna understand how music is put together and be able to more easily create your own music, Having some basic scale knowledge is a no-brainer. Wow, I'm convinced. Number nine. Number nine. Do you know basic rhythms? So do you know how to count whole notes? One, two, three, four half notes. One, two, three, four quarter notes. One, two, three, four and eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. And do you know common time signatures like four, four, three, four, six, eight, and 12, eight? You need to know this stuff because musicians use these terms to communicate about rhythm. And on the practical side, you need to be able to play these accurately, including syncopated rhythms that emphasize the offbeat or the and. One and two and three and four and. You can test out your syncopation skills in the bridge of Other Side by Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is full of offbeat eighth notes. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Number 10, do you know your gear? This isn't exactly theory, but it's understanding how stuff works, which is what music theory is, so close enough. So, do you understand what the knobs on your bass do and what the knobs on your amp do? And can you dial in a good basic starting tone for the kind of music that you play? Because even if you play all the right notes, all at the right time, bad tone can ruin your playing by making it cringeably horrible to hear or just inaudibly boomy and rumbly. Oh no! Okay, last chunk of the checklist. Number 11, can you read some kind of notation? Whether it's sheet music, or chord charts, or tab with rhythm, or all of the above. You need some kind of notation so that you can take better notes at rehearsals, learn songs more easily, read other people's charts so you can play their songs, write your own music, and lots more. Number 12, can you play with a drummer? Playing bass with a drummer is particularly important because bass and drums form the core of the rhythm section and communicate in a special way. Right, Drum Josh? go, 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 go. So do you know the names of the pieces of the drum kit?
And do you know how to come up with bass rhythms that will gel with a drum beat? Like by following the kick drum, or playing a simple supportive rhythm like chugging quarter notes or eighth notes. Number 13, can you jam with other instruments? Do you have basic jam skills? Like if you're the one starting a jam for a guitarist or keyboard player to come in on, do you know how to create a one chord vamp? Versus creating a chord progression. Can you find the root note or root notes if somebody else has already started the jam? Okay, find the root note. No. Um, no. 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 Yes! Number 14. Do you listen to who you're playing with? Whether that's real live people in a room or just a recording, as an intermediate bass player, you should be working on opening up your ears to the rest of the band, not just listening to yourself because it's no fun to play with somebody who isn't listening. Plus, listening gives you better ideas for what to play and how to play. So for example, can you play with different dynamics, loud or quiet, based on what you're hearing? When you're down, what? Another big piece of listening is ear training, so you understand what you hear. Like, can you tell the difference by ear between major and minor chords? Try this out. I'll give you a few seconds for each one. All right, we're almost there. Number 15, can you play a 12-bar blues in any key? Because it's the most common song form to jam on. Even if you're not playing blues per se, a lot of rock and pop music follows this form. So if I call out a blues in E, can you find your three root notes, the one, four, and five, and play a basic bass line? Number 16, can you create bass lines? Coming up with the bass lines comes up in almost every musical situation, from recording in the studio to just jamming with friends. So as an intermediate bassist, you should be able to easily throw stuff together using roots, fifths, octaves, and triads. Right, noob Josh? Here's a test. I'll give you this chord progression, G major to D minor to C major to another bar of C major. Can you come up with some basic bass line ideas? Just try this out for a couple rounds for fun. To D minor, to C major, stay there. going. So there's no one right way to do this, but I could start by just playing root notes with a kick drum, then maybe add some fifths, some octaves, or some triads, major on the G, minor on the D, major on the C. Number 17, dun -da -da -da. have you played along with some full songs? Because that's the whole point, right? Actually playing music with your instrument. Plus, playing full songs will train your endurance, your ear, and your ability to remember long song forms, which are all crucial skills for any musician. So if you've just been doing like fingering exercises and playing scales up and down and short little riffs and stuff like that, just knock it off for a minute and take the time to learn some full songs. It's really fun. Yay! So what do you think? Did I leave out something important? Did I include some shit that doesn't really matter? Let me know in the comments, but I've gotta go give my cat a bath. Ah!